Hi, everyone. Welcome to Poetry and Talk. Poetry and Talk is a new online interviewing platform for poets to share their poetry, background, and inspiration. We're so grateful that you're tuning in with us today. We have a new guest poet to introduce you to. We decided, since it's close to Christmas, that we cozy up by our Christmas tree for the last couple of shows before Christmas. We hope everyone's having a great holiday season, wishing you a Merry Christmas to you and your family. We hope you'll stay connected with us on social media, on Poetry and Talk, on our YouTube channel, and our Facebook page as well. Please subscribe, like, and share. We appreciate your support. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Poetry and Talk, and I'd like to welcome our guest poet for today, Beth Major. Beth, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me with you. This is wonderful. Um, if I could start, I'm just going to read my poem, which is simply titled Dan, and then I will talk about it afterwards. Okay. Dan, remember me when I am gone. I will not be far. Just stepped out the door, taken the dogs for a run, collecting wood for the fire. Then in the kitchen, making tea, whistling like I always did. And you all join me round the old wooden table, drinking tea, wiping the sleep away, smiling and laughing as the sun streams in. Remember me fussing over dinner, drinking red wine, listening to the cricket on the radio, fixing a gin and tonic for your mother, the walks in the woods, my trusty penknife making branches off the trees into bows and arrows. Remember me, the holidays in the sun, on the beach, searching the rock pools for hidden treasures, eating fish and chips, working on my allotment, or sitting in a deck chair in the garden, the chats, the games in the evening, reading the papers, Remember me as I remember you, and I want to thank you for loving me. As much as it hurts me to leave, I know I'll be all right. Going to fix things up in my own little way. Making a home was always my greatest achievement, and all of you my biggest love. God bless, Dan. Um, Yes. Well, this, this poem came about because um, Danny, who is my uh, husband's father, uh, very sadly passed away this year to cancer. And um, I asked his sister Emily if it would be appropriate for me to write a poem to read out. This is because I wanted to do this because I, I wasn't able to say goodbye to him and I, it bothered me, you know, and I thought if I could write a poem that summed up the sort of person he was, that it might be a bit of a comfort to everybody as they were all going through this grieving process. And it was only when I started to write it that I suddenly realised that I was doing it in the style of a letter. It was like, remember me. It was like he was asking, inviting them to remember him as he was before he got ill. And he was asking them to remember all the good times they shared. Like a very big part of him was he was a very big family man. He was very, um, it was all about, all about his children. He loved them to bits. He always carried a pen knife around with him. He was like, always be prepared type of person. He would take them to the woods, he would make dens using his pen knife, and he would make bows and arrows from trees. He could just make anything. He was that sort of person. He was part of he was part of life, he was part of nature, he was really part of soil. It's, it's almost spiritual in a way, the sort of person that he was. Mm -hmm. And um, all the other aspects of him, like every time we used to go and visit him, he would, he always grew, grew his own vegetables. 
and the first thing as I would have to do when I got there was have to go and see the vegetables that he'd grown because he'd be so proud of himself, you know, and I would go there and I would share in his enthusiasm and his pride of the things that he had created from, you know, seeds and I can't, I, I mean, if you were to meet him, you would know what a wonderful person he was. And I just feel that this poem said everything about him. And afterwards, after I had read it out in church, I had people from family coming up to me and telling me how it connected with them, the poem, which was very important because I think that poetry should connect. And everyone said to me how it just, it, it was Dan getting up in the morning, whistling, making the cups of tea, sorting the dogs out, taking them out for a walk was something that he always did. And, you know, sitting in the garden, his deck chair was something he always did in the summer that he liked to do and reading his papers. And we always we always had the board games out when I used to we used to go and stay. We were always playing games and there was always a lot of laughter. And I felt like this poem kind of covered all of that. And then at the end, when he says, um, remember me as I remember you, was his way of saying, I'll remember all the good times that I had with you and I'll take them with me because I don't believe that he's actually gone. I, I believe that his spirit lives with us always. And I, I think that being able to write something that sort of reached out and connected with everyone in such a powerful way because it took me a long time I had to rewrite it it took me a whole week to just come up with a whole just trim it down and make it better but um at the funeral when I read it out at the church the the vicar was so blown away by it but afterwards, when we got to the crematorium, he asked me if I would read it out again. He said, would you mind reading it out again? Because he said, I don't think any words that I could say would be um, in any way, would really tell anything more that people need to know about it because your poem says everything. Mm -hmm. So that, that was what he was. He, he was a family man. And um, Matt's mum, Angela, has just moved four down four houses down from us now so she's living in the same street as us and I said I'd mention her and Will and Ash and of course my wonderful husband Matt so and I have the daughter Alice which you who you met earlier and yes that's our family mm -hmm. and that's who he was a wonderful man mm -hmm. and um yeah he I take my inspiration from, I, I think my poetry has um, always played a big part in my life because I feel that it's given me confidence and I've never had a lot of confidence, but I do feel that I, my imagination has always helped me to take me to places. Because when I sit down and I write something, I look back at it and I say, do I, did I actually write that? Because I can't actually believe that I could create something um, and, uh, you know, first thing in the morning, it's crazy, I know, but first thing in the morning when I wake up is usually when I have my best ideas. After a good night's sleep, I'll sit up and I'll write three poems off, off you know, like, like just as quick because I just, sometimes I'll try and interpret it, interpret my dreams as well. If I, if I think about it, I'll try and think, oh, well, I wonder if I could, uh, understand my dreams and put them in poems as well and I do that sometimes mm -hmm. um they just you know I, I'm interested in that sort of thing mm -hmm. yes um Beth I have a couple questions um I'd like to ask you yes of course um so beautiful to you know such a beautiful gesture on your part to to write a poem sort of like a a farewell gesture so to speak uh to Dan and what I found very interesting is it's not a super long poem, but yet you really give us through being very descriptive and giving us a very a relatable things like sitting at the, um, you know, the breakfast table. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
and certain references to outside, like we actually feel like we know him. And um, this descriptive style um, and this um, particular way that you uh, presented the poetry, um, is this kind of indicative to the rest of your poetry as well, or, or a certain body of your poetry? I kind of have that, that kind of visual kind yes, of- thing. Yes, yes it is actually. And um, can I just tell you, this is interesting now, I, I actually do have quite vivid dreams at times, and I actually did write a short story based on a dream that I had, which I can remember word for word, but it, I won't bore you with that. All I will tell you is that it, it was based on this girl who um, started to do a painting, and it was a painting of a vampire. And, and as the painting started to take shape, she could feel that the vampire in the painting was coming to life and it was kind of taking her over because she kept having this dream of being out in the street in her pajamas and him taking her biting her neck and all that sort of thing and making her a vampire as well and at the end her her boss at work is worried about her so she goes to the flat she can't find her but what's happened at the end is that when she's finished the painting there's a girl in the painting and the girl is is her she's in her pajamas and she's got her fluffy slippers on and she is is with this vampire in the painting so when this uh, boss goes to the work from work goes to see where she is because she's worried about it she can't find her and when she looks over in horror she sees that that this she's in the painting so this was a dream i had and i just uh, i just ended up writing a story about it mm -hmm. that's really interesting so you have a very vivid imagination. I do indeed, yes, mm -hmm. yes. And so a lot of times your, your poetry, Beth, is inspired by your dreams, as this one that you just mentioned, and then you go ahead and you write a poem about it. Yes, and not, not just that, but also I have battled with depression on and off for years, and I sometimes feel that my poems can become quite dark. It depends on the mood that I'm in, or um, there was another poem that I wrote actually that um, I, I believe that you interviewed a friend of mine, Mark Rippon. He actually showcased it and it was, he lives downstairs. And this poem was actually based on a friend of mine who very sadly committed suicide. And it's like depression and suicide are some, some subjects that are so hard to talk about. Um, and it, although it wasn't about her particularly, it was based on, on her because I've never forgotten her. And um, when Alice was a baby, when she came to the christening and everything, and she was for a while, she was part of our life. And I was devastated when she, when she was gone. So this poem was based on her. But I mean, other poems I do write, I think about, I, It'll, an idea will just hit me from nowhere and I'll write something and I love writing because I find it so therapeutic and calming and it centers me because I think people with depression I think they struggle so much and I think if they have an outlet if they have something that they can do to um, express themselves I think it's so important I think poetry goes so much deeper than just verses and you know it, it, it's so much more than that to me it's, it, it really is a very personal thing mm -hmm. so poetry has been very healing for you it has yes in a, in a multiple uh, variety of ways uh, yes. whether it's uh, dealing with certain family situations like with um, the passing of Dan uh, yes. and with dealing with depression it's, it's been uh, very healing as you mentioned as well Yes, it has. Mm -hmm. So can you bring us a little bit deeper into the, um, the aspects of, of healing with your poetry? So if you're exploring some of these like dark areas, if, if you're in that mode where it's, um, you're feeling that uh, depression surfacing um, and whatnot, and you're starting to write about it, it, okay, we understand that it has to do with the, the kind of expressing and, and kind of getting out. Yes. Yeah the different feelings and whatnot. But take us a little bit deeper. What, how, how else is, do you feel intuitively or experientially or both 
um, is poetry specifically healing you, whether it's in the case of depression or, or any you know, other thing that you might be experiencing? Can you touch upon that for us, Beth? Of course I can. Um, well, I believe that um, if I just let myself go into my writing, then I actually find myself, if that makes sense to you. Because I think when you are depressed, you lose yourself a bit. And so I bring myself back with my writing. Because when I sit back and I look at what I've created, I'm really proud of myself. And I feel, I, I really feel like I've achieved something. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think it's, I do empathize so much with, with people who have depression because I think it's so hard to be able to focus. So but to be able to focus on something like a piece of writing, it's a really good tool to have. Mm -hmm. And um, I just get so much from it and it brings me so much joy. And I have actually written poems for family members and for friends as well when they've needed them. And uh, a, fr a particular friend of mine was going through a bit of a depressive phase and I wrote a poem for her mm -hmm. and she said it really helped. And it's good to know that poems can mm -hmm. help like that. Mm -hmm. So poetry has been uh, very centering for you. You've kind of um, yes. gathered a, a place of self-confidence. And it's also been like a, a connector for you because it's helped you connect with family and help you connect. Yes, I'm friends, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you write um, in a very relatable style. Um, particularly in, in the poem that you read about Dan. It's things that no matter where you live, where you're from, they're just, you know, kind of like human condition things. That's right. Just all relate to. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I, just, I just think the, the poems have got to mean something. I, I mean, and <laughs> yes, and uh, also I have learned to, uh, uh, how to get over my writer's block as well, because um, some days I will sit there and I just can't think of anything to write at all. And I'll be sat there for ages and the inspiration just won't come to me. So I actually came up with a really useful tool that might be helpful to other people with the writer's block. And that is to focus on an object, which is what I do. I focus on one object and then I'll write a couple of verses about it. Then I'll go back and I'll write a couple more until I've actually got a poem. And then I'm over my writer's block, as he is, he, is you know, it's, it's amazing how it sounds, it works. <laughs> Beth, can you give us some examples of some things that you looked at, you focused on, and you wrote about? Yes, I can actually. I wrote a poem about a pen with a, with a friend of mine, Tabitha. We both had writer's block and we both ended up having to write a poem. Uh, we both did it between the two of us, actually. And, and we, in the end, we looked back at it and it was quite incredible. It, we'd written a poem about a pen. Mm -hmm. And she said to me afterwards, she said, well, that's amazing that I would be able to get rid of my writer's block like that. Thank you so much. I shall remember that. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting tool to, to put in the tool belt. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, because, I mean, if you have no inspiration to write, uh, you could be sat there for a long time thinking about something, but if you just empty your mind and look at an object, focus on that object, and then make a silly rhyme out of it, then you, before you know it, you have a poem. And between mm -hmm. the two of us, we made a poem up about a, some, something as simple as a pen. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, we were, we were really proud of ourselves. It mm -hmm. was good. Mm -hmm. um, I want to go back, Beth, to um, the uh, healing aspect of poetry for you. Um, so I'd like to find out a little bit more about the evolution of your poetry. So, for example, when you started to write about, um, you know, various subjects, and now specifically um, with the depression, and yeah. As you've kind of moved along and you found it to be very healing, very soothing, very cathartic, you know, having all these, these properties. Um, as time has moved on, do you see a difference in the poetry when you kind of get in those moods? Does it feel lighter? Is it less intense? Have you found that you actually are writing about the depression less and more about other things to kind of show that that part of you is, is healing more? Do you have any kind of words or indication? Oh, yes, absolutely, most definitely. I mean, I, I feel like my style has improved so much over the last couple of years because I'm, I'm thinking more now about life than ever before. 
and I, I mean, I think it is very easy to get um, sucked so much sucked into the depressive side of things that you actually lose yourself in your writing because that's all you ever write about. But I do like to write about lots of things, and you know, I, I, yes, I, I do feel that my writing has improved so much for me personally because I've, I've gone on a journey with it, and I feel that I have had a lot of personal growth from this. I, I look back on my poetry now when I read it back to myself and on the, in the days when I was really depressed, some of them were quite dark. But I, I find that I'm reaching out more to my fantasizing side of things where I am more creative now with my poetry. And Mark's helped me with that by being in his group. It's helped me to see other people's styles of writing as well. And it's given me confidence when I've seen how people have reacted to my poetry because you, you just don't know how it's going to be received. But yes, I, I, I do believe that uh, my poetry has improved mm -hmm. and in such an extent now that I'm confident enough to put it into a book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, before you touch upon your book, because I'm interested to find out about that, can you touch upon, Beth, how you actually even began to write poetry? How did this actually all begin with your um, poetic journey? Right, well, I think it, it all started for me when I, when, I, um, when I was heading for a nervous breakdown and I needed an outlet. So I, I found that I was really um, needing to do something to let all my emotions out. So I was, I was keeping a diary to start with. And, uh, and then as, as I progressed from a diary, I, I started to write about my feelings. And then from writing about my feelings, I found I was able to actually put together a really good poetry. And it, it was quite a, a revelation to me that I, my writing was actually good. And I thought I was actually beginning to think to myself, yes, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, to go from then, from that position that I was in then, to where I am now, I'm a different person. Um, I mean, I've had, to, I've had a lot of things I've had to deal with. I have a son that has autism and mental health issues. I have a husband that's disabled and we, we just get on with our life. It's not always easy, but, you know, we, we get on as best we can. Mm -hmm. And I feel because of them, I feel my... Um, my poetry has improved because of them being in my life because I'm loved and I feel confident enough to show that in my poetry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, can you let us in on how often you write poetry as well? Oh, now you're asking me a question. I write every day. Oh. I, could, I could actually write up to three to four poems a day, actually, in quick succession. I mean, I could it, just so I, I just give you an example. I was, I was on the way home in the car. We were coming back from the funeral and Emily was driving us back and I actually wrote some lyrics to a song for my cousin, Owen. And um, he actually put it to some music for me. I could just be sitting on a, on a bus and, and if I have an inspiration to write something, I'll write it. Or, if, you know, I'm just sat there with a cup of tea, an idea comes into my head and I think, oh, I've got to put that down before I forget it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that, that's how I go. That's how it works with me sometimes. And then with this whole poem about Dan, it was just, I wanted to do it right. I wanted to do him justice. So I took my time over it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when you presented this poem uh, during the funeral, um, did that have a different uh, feeling to it as opposed to just seeing it in the written word? Oh, most definitely. Very, very powerful, in fact. Um, I mean, I, at, towards the end, I struggled to say the last verse because I was overcome with emotion and I think everyone else was as well because it, it, it just described the, the, the person he was so perfectly. In fact, I don't think I could have written anything better because I wasn't just taking my memories about him. I was, I was taking other people's memories and putting it in. So in a way, that letter could have been written by him for them 
Mm-hmm. And it was a personal, it was something personal that even though I wrote it, it was like it was a message from him. And I thought that was very comforting. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's the thing that I got that it was kind of more like of a, you were more of like a funnel. And then, yes. and then he was kind of giving you the words and kind of guiding you as, as you were writing it. That's right. And I, and I do believe that that's why it, people connected with it so much because I think it is something that he would have written himself if he had been able to, mm-hmm. but it, was, it wasn't really a goodbye, if you, if you understand. It was, remember me, because I won't forget you. Mm-hmm. So that's a very strong message for someone when they pass over, because grief is awful, and people will miss them dearly. And, but, but to remember that they are always present, I believe that they are always present in our lives, mm-hmm. even when they go. And they're no longer with us. I still feel, I still feel him with me every day. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is so beautiful. And I like how you distinguish. There, there is a difference between saying goodbye, and there's a difference between remembering. The remembering kind of makes it feel more like enduring, e- eternal, like they're actually still with you. So I think that was a, a great distinction uh, that you brought up. Um, we still have a few more moments, Beth. Um, I'd love for you to let us in on your book. And um, perhaps share a few things about your poetic journey that you haven't shared with us yet, if you would, please. Oh, no, she's still there. She's frozen. No, she's not. Oh. oh, sorry, I thought we froze. <laughs> you froze there for a minute and I got a bit worried. <laughs> yeah, I think we had a little bit of internet um, interruption. Um, but if you could share with us, Beth, um, a little bit about your, your book and offer us some closing comments, um, that would be... Of course. Cool. Yes, well... I, my book is really going to be based on um, events from my life and from this, things that I will take from this year. And also I want to include Dan's poem in it. And I will, I will actually be mentioning him in the foreword in my book as a dedication to Danny because I think it's going to mean so much to so many people. And, you know... Uh, I'm just going to be writing, it's called, it's going to be written from the heart. And, and I do believe that's why poems are written from the heart. I believe that. And I, I, I think that's a good, good title for a book. And they will be poems that I have written for friends or for family and uh, about my life and about, you know, everything that I've experienced will go into that book. Mm-hmm. Um, thing. Yeah, yes, but I have a question. Um, you, you touched upon it uh, earlier. The poems that you write for friends and for family, do you take the initiative with that? Do you, um, you know, basically tell them or, or ask them uh, that you're going to write a poem or do you just go ahead and do it? I realize in the case of the funeral, you, you know, you kind of wanted to. Oh, yes, yes, of course, yes. But, but in, in other situations, how does it yeah. play out? Sometimes, if I feel like a person needs, my fr- when a friend or a family member needs a lift, then I will write a poem that kind of um, uh, indicates to me what they're going through at the time, and they take raw great crum- comfort from that as well. And then, um, one instance, my uh, Angela, my mother-in-law, asked me to write her a poem about a pink rose that I bought, I, I bought these roses and she had kept them all. They'd all died, all but one rose. And it had survived after Dan had passed over. And she said it was ready to die just as she was about to move to come down here. And she thought that was quite symbolic. So she asked me to write a poem about it. So I did. So I should be including that in the book as well. All mm-hmm. the special poems that I have written for people who mean so much to me and all the poems I've written about my experiences will be going into the book. Mm-hmm. It's from the heart. 
<laughs> yes, I love that title. That's that's so beautiful how it all kind of pours out from there, kind of bringing us back back to our center. Um, I love how you're a connector. You know, you you kind of feel into other people's uh, situations, and then your kind gestures of of um, you know writing a poem for them to uplift them, to encourage them. You know, as well as kind of taking on the task, so to speak, to help to heal and clear yourself as well with the poetry and then uh, other subject matters that, that you, um, you know, tackle as well. Um, let's go ahead and find out some closing comments from you. And if you could let us know how we can stay connected with you and um, whatnot, yes. Well, I would say to anyone who, who is writing poetry to just, just go with it. And if you write, if you write down the poems that if it's coming out and it doesn't really make any sense at the time when you're writing it, believe me, I know when I read it back, it makes perfect sense to me. And don't be afraid to use your imagination and don't forget about the uh, important writer's block tool to just focus on an object if you're stuck and then it will, you'll suddenly find the floodgates will open again and your creativity will, will come out again. And if you want to uh, find out more about my poetry, I have actually just recently started a group on Facebook and it is called Written From The Heart. And this is what my book's gonna be based on. All my poems will be there. And also if you want to find me, my uh, Gmail account is beth.majorkisskiss at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Any idea, Beth, when the book's going to be out, even if it's just a rough, rough um, date? I'm, uh, I'm actually hoping to have the book out by next summer because I uh, have actually started compiling all my poems now. And I'm really keen to get it out by next summer. There's just been so much going on this year. Uh, as you can imagine, it's been a horrible year. So I'm just going to, once Christmas is out of the way, I'm just going to be full on getting my book together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. We'll look forward to that. Well, we're going to close out the show, Beth. Thank you so much for being our guest poet and sharing your poetic journey and sharing your beautiful heart and your poem in the beginning and some of the um, different ways that poetry has served you in your life. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. I, I, this has actually been very enjoyable. I, uh, I mean, it just means so much to me that I was able to do this interview because it, it's just such a positive way to end the year to be able to talk about poetry which i find really beautiful and thank you so much for allowing me to talk about it yes thank you we appreciate that so much beth and we'd like to wish you a merry christmas to you and, and you and to stay safe as well <laughs> yes absolutely thank you beth and thank you for being our guest poet thank you very much thank you thank, thank you, you everyone for watching today we appreciate your support. Thank you for supporting us on our Facebook page and on YouTube and for checking out the different videos that we have uploaded. And please be on the lookout for new videos as well. And wishing you a Merry Christmas and um, joy of the season. And we'll talk soon on the next Poetry and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed. Thank you again for watching. Thank you again, Beth. Happy holidays. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you.